All right, gang, this is uh, confidence intervals for the mean, okay? So for um, the population mean when the standard deviation is unknown. This is mostly uh, what happens is the standard deviation is not known. So we don't use our z-score table. We use what's called a t-score table. So here we go. So in many real-life situations, the population standard deviation is unknown. And so when it is unknown, we can still construct a confidence interval using what's called the t-distribution provided that the random variable is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed. Okay, so if the distribution of a random variable x is approximately normal, then our t-score is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean divided by, this is the sample standard deviation, over the square root of your sample size, n right there. Okay. All right, so where the degrees of freedom they call are uh, the number of free choices left after sample statistics, such as uh, your sample mean x bar is calculated. And you're thinking, what is that? So uh, when we're using a, a t distribution, our degrees of freedom is always n minus 1, 1 less than the, than the sample size, okay? So um, uh, to find your critical t value, so t of c for the selected confidence interval and your degrees of freedom, okay? So from the critical value t uh, sub c, so our t-score I like to call it, for a 95% confidence level, or find the critical value for a 95% confidence level when the sample size is 15, all right? So my degrees of freedom is 14, okay, and minus 1, okay? All right, so here's a portion of table 5 in our book, so the t-score table. So we're going to go down, this is our degrees of freedom. We go down to 14 right there, and we scroll over to the 95% confidence level right there. So there's our t-score, 2.145 right there, okay? All right. Easy enough, okay, so the figure shows the t-distribution for 14 degrees of freedom and your confidence interval, 95%, and your t-score. So here's a 2.145 and negative 2.145 right there, and so that would give us our 95% confidence interval, okay? So 95% of the area under the t-distribution curve with 14 degrees of freedom lies between the plus or minus 2.145. All right, so for 30 more or more degrees of freedom, the critical values for the t distribution are close to the corresponding critical values for the normal distribution, so the z-score tables. You're, so when you have 30 or more degrees of freedom, our t-scores start getting closer and closer to our z-score distributions. And then moreover, the values in the last row of the table marked uh, infinity in degrees of freedom correspond to exactly the normal distributions, okay? So that's when your sample sizes get really big. It starts getting closer and closer and closer to a, a Z distribution. So when the degrees of freedom uh, we need are not in the table, we uh, use the closest degrees of freedom that are given. Because you'll notice, um, um, I'll show you in just a bit, they, they go to like down to, I forgot, 30 or something, then they go to 40 and 50, they start jumping by 10s, okay? So we use uh, the degrees of freedom that's less than the value that we need. So for example, if we had a degrees of freedom of 57, the, the lowest one below that is 50, so we'd use uh, degrees of freedom of 50. Okay, so this conservative approach will yield a larger confidence interval, which is uh, that has a slightly higher level of confidence. Okay, so constructing the confidence interval for your population mean this is when the standard deviation is unknown. So verify in words that you see that the standard deviation is not known, and then verify that the sample is random and either the population says it's normally distributed or your sample size is greater than or equal to 30 because of the central limit theorem. It makes them uh, uh, normalized. So find the sample statistic n, the uh, sample mean x bar, and your sample standard deviation. Okay, so recall you guys um, um, that uh, the, the mean, oops, I forgot my little, um, my little uh, x bar right here. So the mean, um, your sample mean is uh, is found by adding up all the x's and dividing by the number of numbers right there, okay? And then and then uh, your sample standard deviation is the sum of all of each x minus the sample mean squared divided by um, uh, n minus 1, okay? So uh, identify the degrees of freedom and the level of confidence and the critical t-scores using table 5 for the distribution. All right, and then, uh, then we're going to go ahead and find the margin of error, uh, which is given by the t-score. 
and the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, okay? So uh, your confidence interval then becomes um, uh, your sample mean plus or minus the margin of error E right there, okay? All right, so here we go. We randomly select 16 coffee shops and measure the temperature of coffee sold at each. The sample mean temperature is 162 degrees Fahrenheit with a standard deviation of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean temperature. So assume the temperatures are normally distributed, so that's important, they're normally distributed, so we need to state that, okay? All right, so because N is less than 30 and your standard deviation is unknown, the temperatures uh, that tells us that the temperatures are um, normally distributed, we can go ahead and use your T-score distribution. Now, if it didn't say normally distributed, and this 16 right here, which is less than 30, well, we couldn't get um, a good distribution uh, score on this because it wouldn't say it was normally dist uh, distributed. So please say that you recognize it's normally distributed, okay? Or this is greater than or equal to 30. In this case, it's not. So using... Um, uh, 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 N minus 16 and, and uh, our, our sample mean, there should be a sample mean right there, okay? Um, I'm sorry, that should say N equals 16 right there, so I'm going to put a little equals bar right there. So using uh, N equal to 16, and we know our sample mean, sorry about this, uh, is 162. Our sample standard deviation is 10, okay, our confidence uh, level. And then the degrees of freedom is 15 because it's 16 minus 1. So we look on table 5, go down to the degrees of 15 and over to the confidence of 95%, you'll get a T-score of 2.131. So when we plug all that in, we're going to put 2.131 here, 10 here, divided by the square root of 16 right there, okay? All right. So that's going to, we plug all those in and we get about um, uh, uh, 0.5 or 5.3. Okay, so our confidence interval becomes uh, our sample mean, which is um, uh, the 162 uh, plus or minus the, the, the 5.3. So we're going to go ahead and add that in there. Sorry if I keep doing this. That way it'll be all squared away next year. So we get those values right there. Okay, so we added 5.3 and subtracted 5.3. So always interpret it, you guys. So with a 95% confidence, uh, the population mean temperature of coffee sold is somewhere between... Um, 156.7 degrees Fahrenheit and 167.3 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? All right, if the confidence interval is um, uh, these, uh, so between 8.66 and 10.84, find the margin of error and the sample mean, okay? So the sample mean is in the middle of this confidence interval right there. So uh, we find the average. So let's add these two guys and divide by 2. Okay, so our sample uh, mean is going to be uh, 9.75 right there. Okay, so the margin of error, recall that the confidence interval comes from um, the sample mean plus or minus the margin of error. So um, if we take off um, each this one here, the, uh, the, the mean minus this one, or we do uh, this one minus the mean, we get uh, 1.09. So that must be our, our, our margin of error. All right, you guys, if you are in our class, um, we're going to have you do that. Take care.